much. I hope everyone had a good coffee break. Uh, thanks for the introduction. My name is Shashank Nigam. I'm with Simply Flying. Uh, and as described earlier, we, had, we have worked with over 50 airlines and airports, specifically at the intersection of aviation and marketing. And what I aim to do is share some of that experience today and some insights on uh, how the passenger is behaving and what airlines should be doing. So be ready to hopefully be inspired. Uh, anyone knows this guy? Show of hands, Dwayne Stewart rings a bell to anyone. Well, he's a frequent flyer to begin with. He lives in Abbotsford, BC, just outside of Vancouver. Um, and he's a you know, small business owner. He was recently, about four weeks ago, on a flight from Toronto to Vancouver. Just a typical flight. If the flight was full, so he goes to the gate. And at the gate, the flight attendant tells him, you know what, Dwayne, really sorry, but the cabin overhead space is full. So do you mind checking in your bag? He's like, sure, it's a short four-hour flight. I'll check in my bag. And he does that. And he goes in. He sits in his premium economy seat. And as most people do, you know, when you're sitting in the plane before takeoff, what do you have in your hand? Your phone, right? Because you're about to turn it off anyway. So he's sending your last messages. And then he sees something strange happening outside the window. What he sees shocks him and his seatmate, who is a million miler with this airline, and what he sees is baggage handlers who are throwing his bag and others ba other bags which were checked in gateside about 12 feet through the air into the bin below. Now, this is the actual video. Okay, watch the bag. Watch the bag. There you go. You wouldn't want to walk down the stairs. Ooh. <laughs> now, this video was posted Sorry, online. Before the flight took off, okay? He shared it on YouTube before the flight took off. And he's not a Paris Hilton, but you know, he still can upload it on YouTube. By the time he landed, the video had 200,000 views. Okay, on YouTube. What's this one? It's coming. <laughs> now, the thing is, over, it was the first long weekend of summer in Canada. And by the end of the weekend, this video had 3 million views. Okay? To Air Canada's credit, they respond within three minutes on Twitter because they have an active social listener policy. Uh, they also issue a press statement over the weekend saying that this is an absolute breaking of airline rules. And these people have been suspended pending further investigation, and they might be fired. Okay? Now, I want to ask you a question. If you, if you were this guy's boss, the baggage handler's boss, who has clearly broken airline rules, and if this guy was not unionized, would you fire him? OK, about one third of the room would fire him, yeah? Don't tell. No, I mean, you, I, you won't get uh, in trouble. But <laughs> if you're the manager, you'll fire. about one third of the room will fire him. Now, what if I told you that this points to a larger discussion, which is to do with core airline operations and not just a social media video going viral, which is this. Air Canada recently brought into service its new 777 HD uh, plane, which is the high density seating, which means in the same plane there are 91 additional seats. Okay? Of course, from a numbers perspective, you know, the revenue managers are jumping through the roof celebrating that. We got 91 additional passengers, we got premium economy, four classes, fantastic, or three classes in this case. Uh, but what that means is there are 91 passengers with carry-on bags which won't fit. Now, is it practical to expect the baggage handler to walk down that staircase 91 times because that's what the, airlines, the airline rules suggest? Not really, unless he has really strong hamstrings or you know, really good legs to do that up and down. Uh, the interesting thing is this is not an exception, as uh, the Runway Girl Network recently shared that Air Canada is going to convert all their 777s into this. And guess what? You've got a serious problem on your hand because you don't want a 3 million view video going on every 777 that takes off, right? Because it does impact the brand. In fact, today's social media is the early warning system for all airlines on what might be a very big problem coming up and you've got to pay attention. Now, you might think that Dwayne is alone here. 
But guess what, he's not. Welcome to the age of con the connected traveler. He's not alone. Uh, we saw lots of statistics today. Uh, this is just a quick, uh, you know, stats on what people carry on board. 82% have smartphones. How many of you here do not have a smartphone? Who's got a Nokia? <laughs> Two Nokias? Any Blackberry guys here? With the keypad? That's because your company says you have to have a Blackberry, right? <laughs> now, all of these people are flying in the air and ensuring that they're connected almost throughout, if not at the airport, then on board as well. And they're sharing real time. That's the obvious thing to do. It's a second nature that if you see a bag being thrown, you take out your camera and you film it. It's second nature. Uh, what is also second nature is something like this. You've got passengers connected at the back of the plane. Any guesses how many devices this guy has? Five. He's got an iPad, a laptop, a camera, a Blackberry, a keyboard for the iPad, and if you count the screens in front of him, two more screens. And he's in economy class. Okay? People today carry their living room up in the air. And that's the reality. Even up front, you might recognize some of the faces up here. This was on a business jet flight across the Atlantic, but there was Wi-Fi. So this is what people do. They're connected and they're working, tweeting, Facebooking, whatever they're doing, right? But they're connected. Uh, this is Mary Kirby who's sitting back there and speaking right after this. Uh, when she flew US Airways uh, recently, she says, you know what, I'm on an A321. My tray table is broken, overhead bin is broken, but the Wi-Fi is working, so I'm complaining about it. First world problem. But guess what? This is how the connected traveler behaves today. They won't necessarily tell the flight attendant, they might tweet or Facebook about it, and expect the airline to take care of it. And the airline that wins is the one who's listening. And Mary, did, was anyone from US Airways waiting for you at the gate when you landed? No? no? Uh, but they did respond, I saw their response on Facebook. So they have a very good social media team, which needs to translate into a very good operational team as well, right? Hopefully. Uh, but hey, guess what? She's not alone too. This is what happens in an emergency. Step one, put on oxygen mask. Step two, take a selfie. <laughs> this is on a Singapore Airlines A380 flight, which was diverted to Baku, Azerbaijan. And this is the first thing the guy does, and his wife is waving. What panic are we talking about? I mean, this is an emergency landing, yeah? This is how the connected travelers behave, and you've got to be ready for these personas. And we've put together really detailed frameworks on how to deal with each type of persona who's in flight, but the airlines have to be ready. The connected traveler is here, and guess what? Their decisions to fly your airline, to stay in your hotel, to use your airport, is actually influenced by what people say on social media as well. I have sweared never to fly via Brussels again because the immigration lines from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. are so long that I would rather go to Schiphol, clear immigration in 10 minutes, and take the train down and work for those two hours than stand in a line, without Wi-Fi, by the way. Yeah? And that's because I learned from someone else's experience who was tweeting like, oh my goodness, here's a photo of the immigration queue. It's not something you want to do. And who, who here would book a hotel today without reading TripAdvisor, for example? Booking decisions are influenced by what happens on social media. And you might think that Dwayne is an economy class passenger and doesn't really affect my business class passenger. Guess what? How many of those three million views were people who would be high yielding? That's what you gotta think about, even though he might not have posted it. Uh, now, that was the first story arc. The connected traveler is here. Those of you who are in the media, you know what a story arc is, but is there another story arc? The future. We heard, or some of you might have tried uh, yesterday upstairs, the, the Google Glass, and I've got one of those here, so I'm gonna try and take a photo of this. Um, so you got this Google Glass, okay Glass, okay, it turns on. Take photo, and tweet it out. Okay, it's not tweeting yet, but it's taken the photo. Uh, our variable's the future. Can you use this or this to enhance customer service for passengers? We saw American Airlines announcement this morning, the world's largest iBeacon deployment. That's great. The key is, are you ready for the Google Glass generation? Here's a lady who's wearing a Google Glass and was told by the United Airlines flight attendant, please take it off or I will not let you board. Why? Because she's concerned about privacy. So she does take it off, 
but still takes a photo using a phone and still posts it on Google saying, hey, you know what? I had to take off my glass because they were scared I would take a photo. I still take a photo and I put it up. So yes, you might have these guys on board, but is your airline ready for them? Forget about optimizing your experience. Are the policies even updated that flight attendants should or should not do this? You don't want an airline where there are inconsistencies when it comes to this. And that's key in all sorts of implementation. Going forward, this was held last week, the American, the world's first wearables hackathon. And can you see what this guy is doing? He's scrolling his Pebble watch using another device that he's wearing. Um, I mean, I would touch the watch and scroll, but that's okay. But these, this was one of the applications that came out of this wearables hackathon last week held by American Airlines in San Francisco. But the key is, what are you thinking of achieving out of this? Is this scalable? How many percentage of your Google, uh, passengers will be wearing a Google Glass or a van? If they're not, are you willing to give them one to enhance their experience? You really have to think about what you want to achieve as an airline. And I want to show you a video and actually have a gift for someone who guesses what product this is. Sorry, I'm getting all the sneakers here. Um, <laughs> let's start watching the video. That is awesome. I want you to tell me oh, what they're looking at <laughs> before the end of the video. Whoa. Any guesses? That's really cool. <laughs> oh, who was that? There you go. That was, that was quick. Just take a look at it. I'm going to throw it back there. Now, <clears throat> what you want to think about, this is, by the way, the Amazon phone, which is being launched tomorrow or today? Today, sorry, too much travel. Today in Seattle, uh, in a few hours. But the point is, I could have put, changed the last screen to an Apple logo or a Google logo or a Samsung logo, and you would still believe it, right? The thing is, do you want to be the airline that has variables and people talk about it and it stops there? Or do you want to be an airline that actually gets something more done with it too? What are the metrics you're measuring? Is it a PR attempt? Then for sure, go measure how many press mentions you got out of it. But is it anything more than that? You really need to think hard about operations. You need to think hard about integration in your systems. And you need to think about your customers' habits. Is it widely used yet? If it is not, then can you focus, let's say, only on the premium travelers, which is what Virgin Atlantic did with CETA, where they focused only on the folks coming to their lounge. And the feedback has been quite positive about that. So you really need to think where variables fit in before diving deep into it. And that's key, because you've got limited resources, yeah? Where would you rather put your feet in? in something completely new. If it is, then perhaps it's a small micro effort in which you see how it works and, ex and scale from there. If not, you have to be in the now. And this is the here and now. On a flight from New York to London at 6.53 PM, the battle for the armrest begins yeah, in economy class. And guess what? You win. Yeah. Do you get a like or a dislike on Facebook? Just show me a thumbs up or a down. If you win the armrest battle, do you get a like or a dislike? A like, right, if you win the battle. Um, at 9.30 PM, you start reclining your seat. Unfortunately, the banana reclines further. So you, what, what does that result in, like or a dislike on Facebook? That's a dislike, right? Uh, at 2, 2 AM, you try to sleep. You bought one of those overpriced pillows. Uh, at the airport, and guess what? It's not really working. <laughs> Does that get a like or a dislike? That's a dislike because <laughs> you can't really sleep, right? What this means is the connected traveler of today 
is sharing every single thing as they travel. You as an airline need to be ready for it, especially if you have short haul flights, because guess what? They're at the airport longer, they're, longer than they're in flight, and they're talking about their upcoming flight, not about their work on Facebook and Twitter. First, you've got to be listening, like Air Canada did, and responding, like Air Canada did as well. But then, you've got to be making quick changes, like sending someone to the gate when Mary Kirby lands on that US Airways flight, like, really sorry, Mary, you know what? Here's a premium economy for your next leg, and we'll go fix that overhead bin, which did not close. To be able to respond, if not to the guy sitting on the couch asking when your next flight to Miami is, but surely then to the passengers who are in flight right now. They are the important ones. The passengers who are at the airport right now, who are talking about you, talking to you, talking with you. They are the important ones. Social media is a wave. I spoke here last week, uh, last year, not last week, last year. And the wave was just on its crest. Right now it's a wave that has toppled governments from Morocco to Quebec. It's a wave that PwC identified is one of the biggest risks to telecom industry in Australia. And here at the CETA summit, I can confidently say that if you do not think hard about it, it's a wave that is one of the top five risks to aviation if you do not deal with it in the right manner. And you don't want that wave to turn into a tsunami just because you were looking elsewhere. And the decision ups to you, and I'll be happy to answer any questions in the panel. Thank you very much. Thank you.